Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy and thank you for tuning in. I am doing this quick video about the recent drama involving Richard, aka Vegan Gaines, over his and Jasmine's wolf dog Lucy. In this past Sunday's Q&A, a couple of my viewers brought this situation up and they wanted my opinion on the matter. While I addressed the question during the Q&A, I figured it would be worth elaborating on my, uh, my opinion to a broader audience. As a lot can get lost in an hour-long impromptu uh, event without proper time codes. I do want to preface that Richard and I are friends, and we talk every so often on Facebook. Uh, nonetheless, I want to try and offer my unbiased, well, as possible, uh, view on the situation. Now, I am not there physically in Toronto with Richard and his wife, nor was I with them in Europe, and nor have I ever even physically met either of them. In fact, I've never even talked to Jasmine in any capacity, only Richard. Richard did, however, explain the situation to me over Messenger. In fact, I am the one who suggested that he address the uh, situation in a video. He was initially going to simply ignore the accusations. Now, without having been there, his story is solely what I have to go on, so take this video as you will. There is no need to rehash what Richard has already opened up about in his video, uh, except to emphasize that Lucy, by his admission, was adopted, albeit from a breeder, but adopted nonetheless. She was ill and as such considered worthless to the breeder. According to the website Dog Breeds List, which came as a top search result on Google, the average cost of a Czechoslovakian wolf dog puppy is between 400 and 600 USD. Keep in mind that is an average cost, not taking into account vaccinations or medical treatments or checkups, care, etc. No, we're taking into account what this specific breeder, who Jasmine had discovered, was charging for her dogs initially. In fact, on Oodle.com, I am finding wolf dogs ranging up to $1,400 here in the U.S., as of February 27th, that is. And in Canada, I see them ranging up to 2,500 CAD, which is equivalent to nearly 2,000 USD as of February 27th currency conversion. Richard claims he had paid 1,000 uh, Canadian dollars for Lucy, and this cost includes all initial care provided by the breeder in Denmark, as well as a suitable travel enclosure for the overseas journey. Now, $1,000 Canadian as of February 27th is equivalent to $763.80 United States dollars, that is, which is a little over 1000 200 USD less than some of the highest prices that I've seen uh, wolf dogs going for online. If you factor in the initial care and other odds and ends provided by the breeder, the breeder would not have profited whatsoever from Lucy, which lends credibility to Richard's story. Furthermore, if this was simply about getting a wolf dog, why wouldn't they just purchase from a local breeder there in Canada? And I've shown you that they do exist. Yet Richard specifically paid to acquire Lucy from Denmark, which is nearly 4,000 miles away across a goddamned ocean, which comes with added transportation costs. Doesn't that just seem a bit excessive to anyone if this simply boils down to owning a wolf dog? Not just excessive logistically, but also financially when you factor in all of the expenses incurred. So I see nothing wrong with what is essentially adopting an ill animal. The animal gets a loving home and care where where it is wanted. If anything, that is the vegan thing to do, no? To limit the suffering of an animal. If everything that Richard has confided in me is true, then he has not committed an offense against veganism in my opinion, and if he has, then I too am guilty of the same offense. As I've mentioned to my viewers in my last Q&A, uh, I've purchased sick birds from pet stores in the past, like budgies and finches. Uh, when I was out shopping for bird seeds and toys, uh, and I noticed a sick, starving, and or bullied bird, uh, I could not just leave them there in that grotesque situation. I would always approach store management, but those fuckers made it very apparent that they could care less. So out of frustration, I'd purchase the bird and nurse it to health, and it would go on to live a quality life under my care and love. They'd always become so vibrant and cheerful, and in one situation, even sired two children, thus fulfilling its biological imperative. 
And my care also included free range access to my entire dwelling, all rooms. I just had to hide wires and, uh, and such to bird proof things and clean up their projectile shits very often. The things we do for those we love. Coincidentally, all of the birds that I rescued in this manner actually ended up living longer than the birds that actually were born into my care and were always in perfect health. But yeah, this means I had to resign myself to pay a pet store money, like Petco for instance, for said birds, uh, often at cost actually, which lines their pocket, but I'd feel worse if I saw something and did nothing, when it was in my power to help. Uh, the birds, on the other hand, having no power over their predicament whatsoever. And I liken this to Richard's scenario. Lucy was sick and was not destined to lead a quality life in her previous situation with that breeder. If anything, by not catering to this particular animal's health needs, Richard would be causing further suffering of said animal. And it is my understanding that Richard has spent thousands of additional dollars uh, since receiving Lucy to provide her medical attention. Now, as for providing her a diet including meat, Richard has said that he had tried feeding Lucy a quality vegan dog food, uh, the, like the one that he uh, gave his uh, mother's dog that it had thrived on, but alas, her health did not improve. So what was he to do? Let Lucy suffer and die? Under his care, no less. Is that what some of you people want? Uh, and you call yourselves vegan? There do exist situations or contexts, regardless of what some vegans in their absolutism wish to recognize, where there are no other options. Granted, these situations are not common, so this is not a general excuse to break from the vegan guidelines or lifestyle. For example, purchasing food products that contain a chicken ingredient, whether or not you toss said ingredient in the bin. Uh, especially when in that scenario, there are indeed alternatives that do not contain an animal ingredient and will not contribute to the demand for that product. And some extreme human examples would include being marooned on a desert island or surviving in a plane crash in a remote tundra, for instance. Statistically unlikely to occur in the vast majority of our lives, but has still occurred historically to an unfortunate few. There is also an uncommon human dietary example, which I will be addressing in an upcoming video, so hit that subscribe and that bell-shaped button to be notified of its release. It is one, to my knowledge, that no one is or has talked about. But again, these extremes or outliers are not a free pass for everyone to say fuck it and write off veganism. Most of us do not bear such a medical burden, nor will most of us experience an extreme survival situation. Lucy's situation falls within an unfortunate medical category, uh, it would seem. Clearly, she could not survive on a vegan diet, and I can only imagine how foul it must have been for Richard to have to resign to purchasing meat products for Lucy. Hell, I can't even walk through the graveyard at my local Whole Foods. I will go out of my way to avoid it. It is also worth considering the very real genetic differences between domesticated dogs and wolves. According to a 2013 paper published in the journal Nature, there exists mutations in key genes that set domesticated dogs and wolves apart. Wolves rely primarily on a carnivorous diet, much like snow leopards, the red fox, and the lynx. Whereas the early ancestors of modern domesticated dogs could thrive on a diet rich in starches. And this conclusion was reached after mapping the gene sequences of both wolves and domesticated dogs. Therein existed 10 genes with key roles in starch digestion and fat metabolism, which demonstrates signals of dietary selection differences between wolves and dogs. Thus, it could also simply be that Lucy's ill adaption to a vegan diet was genetically unavoidable. Again, I am not. Not a vet nor am I a zoologist but it's worth the consideration or it could simply be that Lucy herself is a unique medical case as I was previously mentioning anyhow that's my take on the situation uh, based on what information I have been provided I felt obliged to make this video as I'm sick and tired of the constant virtue signaling blatant stupidity and lack of common sense that I've seen directed toward Richard. Behavior that I feel even threatens veganism as a movement. And I'll be exploring that latter topic in a collaboration sometime soon with Isaac from Ask Yourself.
At the same time, I am totally unsurprised by the unfettered hate that Richard has received over this. Uh, particular YouTubers with their extraordinarily vapid content cater to the absolute lowest common denominator among us. And then their imbecilic followers mobilize and attack in herds. But Richard is in a higher class intellectually than these simpletons, and I don't see any sense in him feeding that cancer any further. If they can't help themselves being so illogically absolute, then they can find the nearest sharp object, sit deep on it, and fucking rotate. Anyway, drop some comments below and let me know what you all think, even if it's a tell me to fuck off. Keep in mind, your butthurt is my pleasure. Also, give this video a like or even a dislike if you so choose. Either way, it will get the message uh, seen and heard thanks to YouTube's current indiscriminate algorithm. Do share this video with others too, I think it's a topic worth contemplation. Finally, click that subscribe button below if you have not already subscribed, and click that bell button which will ensure that you get notifications for all of my releases and live Q&As. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.